Hello everyone, so today we're going to be having a look at some clone fragrances from the house of Dua Fragrances. Speaking of clones, actually funnily enough, recently I had a clone made of myself. Uh, I went and picked him up from the factory and took him home with me and for a couple of days he just kind of walked around quietly behind me and then uh, after a few days he started to get a little bit cocky and he kept swearing and saying really rude filthy words at the top of his voice which of course was very embarrassing for me. I took him back to the factory and they said well it's just one of those things, maybe that's part of your your psyche that's coming out in the clone more so than it does in you and there's nothing wrong with him this is what happens with clones so you'll have to just put up with it I'm afraid and I tried to stick it out for a couple of more days but he kept swearing really loudly it was hugely embarrassing so I, I decided I, I couldn't take any more I took him to a nearby bridge pushed him off and killed him uh, now the next day I got a knock on the door it was the police of course I knew what they were there for and I said oh, you better come in and I said to the police officer so what's the charge is it murder or suicide? He said, no, it's neither of those. I said, well, what is it then? He said, I'm charging you with making an obscene clone fall. Hello everyone, so today's show we're going to be having a look at three clone fragrances from the house of Dua. We're going to be having a look at their version of the rare and discontinued Green Valley from Creed, their take on Chypre Extraordinaire, the incredibly expensive fragrance from Roja Parfums, and their interpretation of the 11ZZ01 batch of Creed Aventus. Before we get into that, also please remember that I have a new thing called the Smelly Army Private Members Club where you can sign up for just $2 a month and get one extra exclusive Mr. Smelly video every week. The most recent one was about my five most cherished fragrances join up if you're interested the links in the description i'd love to see you in there hello everyone welcome back to all of you in the smelly army so today we're going to be having a look at three fragrances from Dua fragrances i've reached out to the company and asked specifically for these three because i'm really interested and excited actually about all three of them so Dua fragrances of course a company mainly known for clone fragrances or inspired expressions where they copy very famous niche fragrances in most cases and make their own version of them. Um, the company has sent me quite a lot of stuff before. These are gonna be ones they've sent me for free and the other bottles that I'm gonna mention now, they have sent them to me for free and I've reviewed them. I've generally been very positive about them for two main reasons. One, they do tend to smell extremely good and very, very close, not identical, but very close to the fragrances that they're based on. And the other really good thing is that they have great performance. They have very high concentrations of perfume oil in them and so if you want to get smelled and get compliments I find that Dua fragrances are really excellent. Uh, not everybody likes the idea of clone fragrances if you want to have the real thing you're into the artistry of perfumery you may not approve so let me know in the comments what you think. Uh, just to mention some of the ones that they've sent me in the past that I still enjoy and wear. Best Citrus Ever which is based on a Henry Jacques fragrance called Iroir. Use that a lot, a really beautiful kind of spicy citrus fragrance. Uh, way back they sent me Imperial Pastique. That's their version of Creed's Millicene Imperial, but with much better performance. Doesn't smell identical, but it's close enough and the, the strength of it is much better than the Creed fragrance. Likewise, Water of Arabia, I love using that. That's their version of Creed's Silver Mountain Water, but it lasts and projects a lot better than the Creed one. More recently, I've been really enjoying Supernova, where they've taken Roger Dove's Elysium, both the Parfum Cologne and the Parfum versions and kind of crossed them. Really beautiful, fresh fragrance. A bit like the Roger Dove version of Creed Aventus. And the, the Dua one, again, it's it projects. It's really strong. People notice when you wear them. Uh, and the, the other one that is really good, actually, Casino Royal Knights is their take on Baccarat Rouge 540. And I still really enjoy that one. Uh, that's, of course, the MFK Maison Francis Kerjean fragrance. And I think this is based on the extract de parfum, the, the stronger concentration. Really, really powerful kind of vanilla candy floss mixed with freshness. Love that fragrance. So I do wear my doers because a lot of people say, oh, people review them, but they never put them in lists. And I bet the reviewers don't wear them. Well, I honestly do. Let's get into the three that we're going to talk about today then. Uh, so first up, this is going to be Chypre X. So the new presentation on Doers is a little bit different to how it used to be. This one comes with a really nice kind of plaque here and the lids have changed a little bit and you also get a nice box now. Nothing amazingly fancy so that the presentation is not amazing 
but they've upped their game a little bit. So let's find out a little bit more information about Sheepra X. Sheepra X by Dura Fragrances is their take on Sheepra Extraordinaire, a recent release from the house of Roger Parfums. The original fragrance costs an incredible £1,450 for a 100ml bottle. Dura's version is $75 for 30ml. The notes, there's a lot of them, here we go. We have aldehydes, bergamot, geranium, rose de mai, orange blossom, jasmine, cistus, tuberose, ylang ylang, heliotrope, violet, blackcurrant buds, peach plum, clove, cumin, patchouli, moss base, cedarwood, sandalwood, benzoin, vanilla, styrax, leather, civet, musk, tonka bean, amber and oris. Okay, yeah, so there were some key facts about Sheepra X, so really long note listing. I was watching the Roger Dove interview where he describes this one on his YouTube channel and he gave a really interesting description. He loves the Sheepra genre of fragrances. These are typically characterized by a bitterness and a dryness in the scent, a sort of greenness. There's a combination used usually of bergamot, patchouli and oak moss. So there's a kind of earthy, mossy undertone, a green bitterness about these fragrances combined with the freshness of bergamot. And when you first spray this one, which I'm gonna respray now, it's absolutely lovely. The real big thing that you get is aldehydes. They're this kind of fizzy, difficult to describe scent, but it's uh, something you'll notice in old Chanel fragrances, particularly female ones, things like Chanel number no. five, number no. 19, or even Chanel Coco. And you really get that burst of this kind of fizzy, very distinctive uh, smell of aldehydes. It's very hard to put into words. There's also the greenness of bergamot and the other real main player, because there's so many notes, I wanna pick out key ones, to me is rose. I think tuberose smells sort of similar to rose, and I know Roger Dove mentioned that as being a real big factor. Now, I should also mention that I've picked up a sample of the original fragrance here, thanks to Fragrance Samples UK for this one. I always say that is the best place around the world to get fragrance samples, and they have an amazing range, and uh, of course a really expensive fragrance, so even one mil is not cheap, but it could be fun just to try, oh, what's all the fuss about this 1,450 pound fragrance, and here it is, Sheepra extraordinaire the real thing uh, on the similarity level then they're very very similar they're not identical now i am not sure is this just because there's so much more concentration of oil in a dura fragrance that even if they've got the exact same ingredients in there they come off a bit different because on paper when i've tested them they're very very close but the dura one comes off as smelling stronger uh, because I think they concentrate their oils even more highly than the, the niche perfumes that they're trying to replicate. They're very, very similar. I've only got a small sample, so I'm not gonna pretend that I've worn the Sheepra Extraordinaire, the real thing, loads of times. I can't do an extensive uh, co comparison, but they're very, very similar. The scent is beautiful. I really, really like Sheepra X. It's classic, it's old fashioned. Uh, it's definitely kind of green and mossy. It may lean a little bit feminine for some people, perhaps in the opening, particularly with those aldehydes. It may re remind you of classic feminine perfumes, but there's definitely something a bit more modern and niche smelling in this one. It's really warming, it's really rich. I get a lot of patchouli. I really like patchouli, so if you like patchouli and rose, it reminds me actually, it's got this plum and things like that in there, kind of fruitiness, peach and plum. And because of that, perhaps, it reminds me of Zoologist's Nightingale, which is a really, really beautiful niche fragrance that I really enjoy, and actually slightly also, weirdly, of Frederick Marle Portrait of a Lady. So if you like scents like this, you might like this one, and if you don't mind the kind of unisex feel of it not being uber masculine with the rose in there and the, the sort of peachiness, you could really enjoy this as a man or a woman. They put silver flakes in it as well, uh, which is kind of a neat touch. Uh, Personally, I could I don't really care about the silver flakes, but I just thought I'd let you know about that. So really, really nice fragrance, really classic, really rich, warming, and no way on earth is the Sheepra Extraordinaire that good that it's worth 1,000 odd pounds, 1,400 and something. But this one for the $75 for 30 mil, if you, maybe if you smelled the real thing in a department store and you've really liked it, but you think the price is outrageous, this is really fun to own and it has really strong performance. I've really noticed when I go to bed, if I've worn it a couple of times, wake up the next day and I, I think, oh, where's that perfume smell coming from? And it, it's on my hand. So Sheepra X, really impressed with that one from Dura Fragrances and I specifically, asked, they haven't just sent me what they want me to put on the channel. I asked for that one because I was intrigued. Moving on then, the next one, and this is one I've always wanted to try the real thing because it's a discontinued one from the house of Creed and this is Vert instinct and let's find out a little bit more about that one 
Vert Instinct is Doer's version of Green Valley by Creed, a 1999 release now sadly discontinued. It's $60 for a 30ml bottle of Vert Instinct and the notes are as follows. In the top we've got Tuscan Mandarin and Sicilian Bergamot. In the mid we have Ginger and Blackcurrant and in the base is Ambergris and Musk. The price, if you want to get Green Valley, is, well, you're going to have to track it down on eBay or somewhere like that. I found one 120ml bottle on eBay in the UK for £380, so very difficult to find and very expensive if you do find it. Okay, so there were some key facts about Vert Instinct. So, based on the Green Valley fragrance, you can't get that anymore very easily. I'm going to put a little bit on... I've already got some on cards, so let's just, let's just take what I've already got on one of these cards and I'll talk from there. I've worn this quite a bit actually because it's uh, a real freshy that you can wear any time. It's beautiful, it's really green and verdant as the name would suggest. Uh, it's a little, but people always compare it actually to Green Irish Tweed from Creed and there's a kind of a similarity but it's it's not massively exactly like that. It has a really nice amber green note. I don't have the original fragrance to compare to, so I'm afraid I'm just going on the Dewar version. I get a lot of mint in this one, a real greenness, a citrus freshness, a grassy element, and some mint, and it's very, very crisp, and it's very, very fresh. It's a bit citrusy, but it's not overwhelmingly a citrus freshness. For me, it doesn't have the sort of cool water-esque thing that you get in Green Irish Tweed, which I think comes from the note of dihydromersinol. I don't notice that so much as a kind of crisp Creed-esque ambergris thing. So it actually strangely reminds me a little bit of Millicene Imperial or Erolfa in that respect. It's got that really nice kind of sweet yet salty ambergris undertone, crisp woodiness, very green and grassy and a lovely, just a beautiful spring in a bottle kind of fragrance. So I've really been impressed by Vert Instinct. One of the things Dua seem very good at is making fresh, crisp, bright fragrances that don't just fade away in a few minutes like so many even expensive niche ones do. So the longevity, really good. Performance, excellent. Really, really nice smell. And that will be definitely a big part of my rotation in uh, spring and summer, which I hope are coming up soon here in the UK. So really liking that one so far. Can't actually compare it to the original, sadly. Last but not least, the one that I wasn't sure if I was that interested, but what the heck, another Aventus clone. This one is called Poseidon's Elixir 11Z. Let's find out a little bit more about it. Poseidon's Elixir 11Z is Dewar's take on the legendary 11ZZ01 batch of Creed's Aventus. The cost for the Dewar fragrance is $60 for 30 mils. Creed Aventus, the retail for a modern 100 ml bottle is £250 in the UK. In the USA, it's $435 on Creed's website. Of course, that's not gonna be an 11ZZ01 batch. They go for much higher prices if you can track them down online. The fragrance notes are bergamot, blackcurrant leaves, apple, pineapple, pink berries, birch, patchouli, jasmine, rose, musk, oak moss, ambergris, and vanilla. Okay, so yes, 11Z, Poseidon's Elixir 11Z, based on the apparently amazing 11ZZ01 batch of Creed Aventus, which I don't have, but I do have normal Creed Aventus, so I'll spray one each on a card and say what I think. I've been wearing this one a bit. Great performance on the Dua version. Of course, the whole point is that it's supposed to smell like this famous batch. I don't have that batch, so I can't compare. Instantly recognizable as an Aventus-esque scent. Very fresh, very bright, very crisp. Lots of bergamot and apple. I never pick up on pineapple, obviously, in Aventus, so it doesn't surprise me that I don't pick up on that note in the opening, but very crisp and bright. As it dries down, as it goes on, I got a lot more smokiness than in my personal batch here of Aventus, which is a 2015 batch. Uh, but I guess that's the idea, because apparently the 11 ZZ01, I think, was more smoky than modern iterations, so let's try the real thing, Aventus. Oh, it's, it's such a great scent. It is really good, Aventus. Uh, they're not identical, but they shouldn't be because it's a different batch, and Aventus famously has batch variations. Both really beautiful. The Poseidon is very, very strong. It's performed more strongly than my batch of Creed Aventus. It has a nice smokiness and a bit more of that, that birchy tone than my actual Aventus batch, but it also has the really crisp citrus elements. So I'd call it very nicely balanced, but not leaning towards the more fruity stuff that's been coming out from Creed more recently. And great performance. So there's so many great Aventus clones. This is up there with them. 
but uh, I can't claim to be such an aficionado or an expert that I can really give a definitive answer, is it the best one yet? But it's, it's superb in performance, and it smells a hell of a lot like Aventus, but uh, a bit more smoky than my personal batch, really liking that one too. Negatives on the Dur fragrance, because I want to be balanced, thank you to the company for sending them for free, but I've got to point out the things that aren't so great. So obviously the prices are not super cheap, you know, they're, you're paying quite a bit per mil for these fragrances. I think it's good they offer them in a 30 mil so the outlay isn't huge, but yeah, you've got to really buy into what the company is saying to want to buy these and enjoy them and think that they're worth it. So yeah, price-wise these are not your RMAFs, your $25 Thing. So it's quite a lot of money for something that is, after all, only an imitation, essentially, of something else. Also, they are never exact. They're never perfectly exactly the same as the fragrance they imitate. They're very, very close. But if you are really obsessed with that one niche fragrance, you've had it for years, you might notice differences and they never get it perfect. Nobody does with the cloning game. So, you you know, there are drawbacks to the whole concept of the Dua fragrance thing or the clone. So be aware of that. It's up to you to pay your money and take your choice. So thank you very much. Let me know what you think about these three fragrances and what I've said about them and about the video in general. We'll see you in the next video. And remember, whatever you're doing in life, let's project. See you soon. Bye bye.